Hello friends! Welcome to the Abrams Children's Books Fall 2020 Preview. My name is Jenny Choi, Associate Director of School and Library Marketing. Are you ready to talk picture books? Because you know I am. One book I'm excited to share with you from this season is The Feathered Serpent and the Five Sons from award-winning author-illustrator Duncan Tonatiu. Long ago, the gods set out to create humans. They tried many times during each sun or age. When all their attempts failed and the gods grew tired, only one did not give up. Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent or god of wisdom. But in order to do so, Quetzalcoatl first had to retrieve the sacred bones of creation guarded by the lord of the underworld. Quetzalcoatl is one of the most important deities in Mesoamerican mythology. The first known depiction of a feathered serpent in the Americas is in a stone monument that is more than 2,500 years old. The book focuses on the myth of the five sons. There are different versions of this story, of course. In his research, Duncan noticed that while there are many accounts about the encounter between Quetzalcoatl and the God of the Dead, not many showed the feathered serpent's journey through the regions of Miklan, the underworld. So here he imagines this arduous journey and brings it to life in his instantly recognizable art style. It's a thrilling creation tale of epic proportions. Duncan created this version of Feathered Serpent and the Five Sons to celebrate the mythology of Mesoamerica and to introduce young readers to this rich tradition. He is especially proud of the transition from color to black and white in the illustrations as Quetzalcoatl goes deeper into the underworld. So make sure to keep an eye out for that when you pick it up. Now I'll turn it over to our talented authors who will tell you more about their books. Hi there. I am incredibly excited to be able to share with you that Peter Reynolds and I, Susan Verde, have a new I Am book coming out uh, this September. We are thrilled. Um, so the I Am series has been an incredible series to work on. The latest one was I Am Love, a book of compassion. And the newest, ready, is called I Am One, a book of action. So I Am One, a book of action, is really a book of activism. Uh, the book is inspired actually by a quote from the Dalai Lama. Um, which I can actually read to you. So, just as ripples spread out when a single pebble is dropped into the water, the actions of individuals can have far-reaching effects. Sorry, I had to read it. But I read that quote, and I've read that quote a number of times, and I've looked around me and been a, a, aware in the world of all of these wonderful individuals who do these incredible things in this world to make it a better place, a more loving, a more kind, a more um, tolerant, inclusive, beautiful place. And it really only takes one, one idea, one action, one person to start something much bigger. And this uh, fact, this, the thing that happens from just one was the inspiration for this book. The whole story is about how one, one person, one individual, one action, like I said before, one selfless act can lead to a beautiful change in the world. Um, and it may feel these days like we need that more than ever. Although there's never a time when kindness and uh, compassion are not something we need. We always need that, right? So I Am One, A Book of Action. So a lot of the books or all of the books in the I Am series have a mindfulness component to them. Uh, part of that is because I teach yoga and mindfulness and it's such a big piece of who I am, but also because mindfulness is about being in the present moment, being here, being now. Um, not worrying so much about before or after, but being right here because this moment is what we have. And so how does that work in terms of a book of action, a book of activism? I am one. Well, this is how it works. 
Mindfulness is being in this moment, right? Is noticing, is noticing your emotions, is noticing how you feel, and then making a conscious choice about how to handle, to respond to those feelings. So when we see something in the world that we feel needs changing or we're very passionate about or we want to help with, um, we have to be very present and very clear so that we're not reacting, but we're actually making conscious choices for the better good. Sometimes when we have feelings like anger, especially, we react, right? We feel really angry in our bodies, in our minds, and we yell or we knock something over or we do something possibly we wish we hadn't done that isn't really productive and doesn't help us feel any better. So when we're mindful, we're not getting rid of the anger, but we're noticing the anger. And then we're saying to ourselves, okay, I'm angry. What can I do? that will help me feel better, will lead to something bigger. Can I go talk to someone? Can I, can I take an action that won't hurt someone else that will help me, that might help other people? So these are the questions we ask ourselves when we're practicing mindfulness. We're noticing our emotions, we're curious about them, and then we give ourselves a moment to make a clear conscious decision. So I am one is just that. It's just that, it's about how one thoughtful, passionate choice, action, word of kindness, step in a certain direction can lead to change and love and beauty and all of those things. Hi, I'm Tom Lichtenheld. I'm an author and illustrator of picture books and I'm here today to talk to you about an upcoming picture book I did with Amy Krauss Rosenthal called Moo Moo, I Love You. Now, this book is just a collection of expressions of love and it's all done through very silly moo puns. So um, don't expect a lot of deep meaning or layered messages, it's just pure silliness. This is a book for those you love, no matter their mood. Good mood, bad mood, sad mood, silly mood. And I'm gonna show you a, a piece of artwork from the book and talk a little bit about how it was created. So this is a spread that says, I jump over the moon for you. And there's a cow, of course the cow had to have a helmet and then um, I had to put in a alien in a flying saucer because those are always fun. So this is the proof for that spread and before it was that, when we first started out, my first sketch looked like this, it said, if you asked for it, I'd give you the moon. And then we decided that we wanted to use that popular old uh, notion of a cow jumping over the moon. So I changed it to this. I jump over the moon for you. This is the sketch. And then from the sketch, I create the artwork. I created the artwork for this book using a Pentel brush pen, which is kind of like a fountain pen, but instead of a, a nib, it's got a, a plastic bristle tip. And I, I take these brushes and I, I kind of beat them up uh, a little bit so they give me a nice rough edge. And then I use textured water, watercolor paper. And um, between the, the bristles on the brush and the texture of the watercolor paper, it gives me a nice rough edge, which is sort of reminiscent of a, a cow texture. And I'll draw it multiple times so that if I like that piece and that piece and that piece, I just scan it in Photoshop and put them all together and create the line art that I like. And then the line art looks like this. That's um, composed in Photoshop. I don't really use the computer to do anything but composition, to you know put things together. All the original art is created traditionally. And then the color I do in Photoshop, I'll layer in some color, I kept it really subtle, and then I took the I put the whole book, all the artwork, I put on brown craft paper because again, I like that rough texture, it seems to match the theme of a cow. So that's how I created the artwork for Moo Moo, I Love You by myself and Amy Krauss Rosenthal. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Hey everybody, it's Jillian Tamaki. Uh, I'm coming at ya. I sound like a YouTuber, but coming at you from Toronto, Canada, and I hope everybody's really well. 
Uh, I'm been asked to make a little video about my upcoming book, Our Little Kitchen, which is um, due to be released in the fall. So I'm gonna do that. And uh, it's sort of a new book for me. It's it's a new thing, I should say. It's based on life experience and um, more so than I think any other book that I've done. I've been I volunteered for about four years in a food program in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, volunteering has always been a part of my life. I currently volunteer at um, an organization here in Toronto uh, that facilitates adult literacy. The experience uh, I was trying to capture was one of teamwork and cooking and food and um, the rewarding aspects of cooking and feeding your community, but also some of the realities of working in a team. It's not always roses, it's not always easy. There's uh, personalities, uh, butting heads, um, but uh, yeah, but hopefully in a fun way. Uh, this is, they've asked me to highlight one of the spreads. Again, I just have a, um, a proof here, but this is the one I chose. And this is the point, point of the story where, and this always happened, you're running out of time at the end. There's so much to do, but people are waiting. People need to eat. You just have to do it. You just have to, you know, buckle down and it's not always perfect, but you know, things need to come to an end. And still so much to do. Watch out, be watch out behind you, salad coming through. It looks like we're having chili again. Those don't, that don't cook don't get to complain. Well, it's not perfect, but it's the best I could do. Two minutes left, let's wrap it up, crew. <laughs> so that was, you know, always the case. <laughs> um, and, and, and I just wanted to have, to get that sense of busyness and that sort of like uh, momentum and uh, just resourcefulness and, but also, just something fun and like this is the kind of spread that I loved as a kid that's my barometer always is what would I have liked as a kid and it's like this crazy cut out cut away view and they used to make us do that those sort of exercises in art school and I thought I'm never ever gonna use that why are you making me do this but there you go uh, they were right I I put those perspective lessons to to uh to good effect hopefully so thank you um and we'll see you on the flip side i guess bye hello from denver my name is dao pumirak i'm a children's book illustrator who is lucky enough to be chosen for this project one girl written by andrea Beatty. first of all i feel very lucky that i was uh, picked for this project because as you know Andrea Beatty is a rock star in children's book publishing. In publishing for children we creators tend to want to change the world. It's a lofty goal but Andrea is doing it one book at a time. One girl is no exception. It brings light to the plight of millions of girls around the world who do not have access to education. I hope by bringing awareness to this issue, people will be inspired to change and make things better. So my work for this project really stretched my imagination. I wanted to portray what it feels like to open a book and find magic and wonder. Those were my themes as I went through the book. When I create spreads and art for children's books, I tried to make it so that each individual spread could work on its own, hanging on a wall um, somewhere, so that each page will intrigue readers to, to go further and read more. I start on the computer, laying out composition, and then when I've got the composition uh, set, I will print it out and then I will sketch in pencil on top of that. And then when I'm satisfied with how that looks, I'll put the line work back into the computer and continue editing then. It was such a pleasure to work on this book and I hope everyone will check it out. Thank you very much. Hello. 
Corey Dorfeld here, coming to you from my basement studio. I'm here to tell you a little bit about a project I've been working on. Earlier this year, my book, The Welcome Wagon, came out. In this book, we meet Cooper, his friends, and the world of Cubby Hill. Well, now I am wrapping up another book about these furry friends called The Giving Day. The Giving Day is all about an annual festival that gives everyone in the town of Cubby Hill the chance to come together and give back. Everyone brings their own special gift to share with the rest of the town, whether that's a musical talent or a special treat or maybe some art. One of my favorite scenes in the book is the spread where we see all the animals arriving at the festival. It was inspired by the feeling I get every time I go to the state fair here in Minnesota. The state fair is my favorite time of year because everyone in Minnesota comes together to celebrate what makes our state so great. There is tasty food and music and art and friends. In this spread, I really tried to capture all the excitement, pride, and joy the critters in Cubby Hill feel at their own town festival. You can see some of the items they are bringing to share, as well as feel that amazing crisp early fall air. To make this spread, just like all of the art for Cubby Hill, I started with a thumbnail sketch. That is a very small and messy sketch that really only I understand what it's going to be. I make all the finished art in Photoshop on my computer using a Wacom pen and I draw on a tablet. Before I do that, I still hand sketch all the characters and then scan them into my computer. So here are some of the characters that are in that spread. You can see the elephant, here's Henry up here, the poodle. I even drew on this side too. There's the magician duck and the squirrels. And who else do I see? Here's the wolf and her little wolf pup. So after I've scanned those in, I make the finished line drawings with my Wacom pen, like I said, and then I color them using Photoshop. I really hope you enjoy looking at all the details in the spread as much as I do and guessing what each animal has brought to the festival. I also hope it makes you think about what would you bring? Would you bake some cupcakes? Would you sing a song? Would you paint a picture? Or would you read everybody a story? Think about it and look for my new book, The Giving Day, out this fall. For me, Corey Dorfeld, and Abrams. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vincent X. Kirsch, and I have a book coming out this holiday season from Abrams Books for Young Readers, and the book is titled From Archie to Zach, and it's a book about friendship, but not just any friendship. This is a book about friendship between two boys that love each other very much, but the trouble is They've never said it. They've never known the words to say to express how they feel. And I know this is something that's very true because very often we, kn we know how we feel, but we don't know that we need to express it and share it with others. So this book, Archie and Zach, is exactly that. It's about these two boys and it's set in an elementary school. And you can see that it's a classroom full of kids, but the wonderful thing about this book is everyone knows that Archie loves Zach, and everyone knows that Zach loves Archie, and it, they are very important in helping him communicate this. This is a wonderful thing about this day and age. It's perfectly okay to love who you love and be who you are. So keep your eye open for From Archie to Zach, this holiday season, from Abram's book, for young readers. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marianne Coca Leffler, and I'm the author and illustrator of The Power of Yet. When Piglet tries to ride his big bike, his mom says, not yet. When Piglet tries to play the violin, sister says, not yet. When Piglet wants to join the baseball team, 
the coach says, not yet. This is the story of one small piglet who uses the power of yet to conquer frustration and then learns that the path to yet is not a straight line. It takes growing and doing and patience and time. There was one illustration in the book that I could really relate to. It was an illustration I created of Piglet as a frustrated artist. While making the illustrations for this book, I had to find my own power of yet. I tried different papers and paints and tools, and I drew Piglet over and over and over again. And I kept thinking, not yet, not yet. Finally, I landed on a style I was happy with. And in the process, I learned that a wooden chopstick dunked in black ink makes a wonderful drawing tool. The growth mindset, the power of yet, is used in many classrooms. It reinforces the value of making mistakes and the understanding that mastering something takes time. I hope that young readers embrace my book, The Power of Yet, and learn that with practice and patience and courage and grit, anything is possible.